Hello students, today we are going to learn the basic principle behind the working of oscillators. We have already learned about amplifiers and you know that in an amplifier you have the input signal given to the amplifier then you have an additional power supply and then you get the output signal. So basically you know that the power level of the output of an amplifier is generally very high. So how does it get, get the additional power supply? This additional power is actually supplied by an external DC source. So thus an amplifier is essentially um, an energy convention device we say that is um, the, we give the input signal and with the help of this additional energy supply which you give this input signal is amplified at the output side with the same frequency as that of the input. Okay, So amplifier basically produces the output signal which is of the same frequency of that of the input but with the help of the DC power supply which you give to the amplifier. Now if there is one thing you have to understand is if there is no input signal then no energy conversion take place in the case of an amplifier. So though you give an energy supply unit here or additional power supply for the functioning of an amplifier, if you don't have any input signal, no output signal will be produced in amplifier, right? But now we will understand in comparison to the amplifier how an oscillator works. An oscillator basically doesn't have any input signal given to it, but it has the additional power supply which you give in the form of uh, batteries and other sources okay and then you have an output signal so what basically oscillator does it it does not have an input signal so without any input signal it produces an output signal of a desired frequency with the help of this power unit so this pr produces an input or an output signal as long as the DC power supply is supplied. Okay, so which means that oscillator is constructed in such a way that or oscillator circuitry is uh, done in such a way that it does not require any external signal to start or maintain this energy conversion process. So here we can say that the DC power or DC energy is converted to the AC energy without the help of any input signal. Okay, so this is how an oscillator circuit should work, which means that you can see the uh, such thing, such devices are very important in especially in communication purpose as well as in you know in, in labs and all. We need every time a uh, source which produces oscillation. So if you want to get an, a sine wave, you may have to work with a sine wave or you want to get a square wave or triangular wave, whatever wave it be. So there should be without any um, signal source, first of all, uh, you have to produce a particular kind of a signal in a lab. So that may be required for many applications, right? So oscillator is such a thing. If there is a device, you just connect that device to the power supply, it will produce oscillations of the type which you desire. So that is basically an oscillator S. Okay, now we shall understand what are the different types of oscillators. Oscillators, as I said before, they are not only sinusoidal oscillators, that is, uh, that doesn't only produce sine waves, that they can also produce square waves or uh, say triangular waves, sawtooth waves, any, any other type. So, but then uh, here we'll be discussing more about the sinusoidal oscillators okay and sinusoidal oscillators can generally be classified into three types or more than that are there but here we'll be discussing basically three types of sinusoidal oscillators one is tuned circuit oscillators then rc oscillators and crystal oscillators in tuned circuit oscillators inductors and capacitors are the major part of the oscillators. We basically use inductors and capacitors to build the oscillators. Now they are basically high frequency 
producers that is their frequencies right, uh, lie in the radio frequency range or we call them as radio frequency oscillators and radio frequency oscillators means generally the they are of the order of say 100 uh, to say uh, 100 uh, kilohertz to 100 gigahertz order so 100 kilohertz to 100 gigahertz around that is the range of a radio frequency oscillations and then uh, here uh, among this tuned circuit oscillators you will be discussing about Hartley and Colpitt's oscillators so we these are the two uh, portions we will be discussing in the further sessions now Coming to the RC oscillators, as the name suggests, um, these RC oscillators are mainly constituted of resistors and capacitors. The capacitors and resistors are, are mostly used to construct an RC oscillator and they are basically low or audio frequency oscillators. They produce signals of low range uh, frequency and that is around of the order of kilohertz that is around 15 to 20 kilohertz or in that particular range where it doesn't go beyond kilohertz range so they, they are basically of kilohertz range oscillators uh, or produce audio signals in the audio frequency uh, range then they are phase shift and one of the example of RC oscillator is phase shift oscillator so we'll be learning in the coming sessions about phase shift oscillators Okay, so now uh, we have the, in addition to that, we have crystal oscillators and they are, quartz crystals are very uh, widely used as crystal oscillators and they, uh, the peculiarity is they can produce uh, oscillations of very high frequency around, uh, from kilohertz to around megahertz, 10 to 100 megahertz range of frequency signals can be produced using a crystal oscillator. So these um, are the basically different types of sinusoidal oscillators. So tuned oscillators, so RC oscillators and crystal oscillators. You will be learning in the coming sessions the Hartley, Colpitts, phase shift and the quartz crystal oscillators. Now we shall learn about oscillatory circuit. So an oscillatory circuit is a circuit which produces electrical oscillations of any desired frequency okay so what you oscillatory circuit is basically a circuit which produces oscillations in the frequency range which we prefer so a basic oscillatory circuit or s or we can say that um, for oscillations to produce there should be a basic fundamental circuit and this fundamental circuit is known as a tank circuit and this tank circuit, it is interesting to see that it contains a capacitor and an, and an inductor. So these are two passive electronic components. So one is capacitor and the other one is an inductor. And uh, they both are connected in parallel to each other. Okay. So this is a tank circuit or we call it also as an LC circuit. So it's also called LC or tank circuit. Now we shall see how basically it works. You come to this figure here you can see a capacitor which is kept charged you can see that the switch is open which means that the capacitor is already kept charged using a battery battery so I connected the capacitor to a battery and it is kept charged such that this metal plate is positive and this part is negative okay so now I close the switch okay so in this figure you can see that the switch has been closed now what happens is when the switch is closed, the capacitor will try to discharge. So here I have shown the arrow is shown as the direction of the electron flow, not the current flow, but the electron flow. So here the electron, when the, once the switch is closed, we can see that the capacitor, the electrons piled up here will flow through here like this. So electron will flow like this. Now what happens? When the current flows through the inductor, you know that it will, this, uh, as the current increases, you can see that the EMF, or sorry, the magnetic field associated with the uh, inductant coil increases. You know, whenever current flows through a mag an inductor, magnetic field will be set up around it. 
right so and this magnetic as the current increases or while the capacitor goes on uh, discharging the current flowing through the inductor increases and that will uh, produce magnetic field associated with the uh, this inductance coil right so which so finally i can say that when the capacitor is charged i can say that the it has stored electrical energy but then once the capacitor starts discharging it loses its electrical energy and the magnetic field associated with the inductor increases which means that the magnetic field energy associated with the inductor goes on increasing so here i can say in one way that the electrical energy is converted into magnetic flux energy right so now the magnetic field is as uh, increases uh, now now once the magnetic field current completely capacitor current is capacitor has completely discharged what happens is that now the current associated with the magnetic or the current associated with the inductance coil will decrease so once the current decreases what happens this magnetic field associated with the inductance coil also starts decreasing so when the magnetic field decreases around the coil begins to collapse what happens a counter emf we say that an induced emf which is according to the lenz's law it is in the opposite emf as the as that of the uh, original uh, or at the, that of the beginning so as the magnetic field around the coil begin to collapse according to the lenz's law a counter emf will be produced in the coil so in the counter emf will be produced means and previously since the capacitor was this a negative it was negative here it was positive here so when the magnetic field associated with the uh, inductance coil start decreasing a counter emf will be produced means this becomes negative and this becomes positive here so now what happens when that becomes negative and that becomes positive and here the capacitor has completely discharged now what happens is inductance because of this polarity here positive negative and positive now the capacitor will get this will get charged with this polarity now the capacitor becomes negative and the the here becomes this metal plate become positive so this polarity is just the opposite as that of the first case okay so by the time the capacitor gets completely charged the whole magnetic field energy stored within the inductor would have collapsed okay so here we can see a kind of an uh, energy transformation taking place here electrical energy was very strong but once it loses discharges then the inductance when the magnetic field is set up we can say that this electrical energy is converted to a magnetic energy and here when the uh, in the uh, when an opposite emf is produced and the kappa and the magnetic field associated with it, it with it decreases you can say that the magnetic energy is then again converted back to the electrical energy within the capacitor so basically an energy transformation from the an um, electric energy to magnetic energy is taking place from capacitor to the inductor continuously in the case of an lc circuit or a tank circuit and with that energy conversion taking place you can see that at a time capacitor will uh, uh, the current will flow in this direction or the electron will flow in this direction and next time the electron will flow in this direction so the current flow direction also changes that at that time current flow will this direction or electrons will flow after that so when the capacitor is charged in this way you can see that the current will be or electrons will be flowing that would be fair to tell the electrons will be flowing in this direction and previously it was the other direction so if it is possible to somehow get the ele electrical energy or the current flowing through the capacitor if you can take it out you can or the current flowing through this circuit if you can tap the uh, current out from this circuit you can see that at one time the current will be flowing in this particular direction next time the current will be flowing in this opposite direction that means that is the property of an alternating current right so that means you will be producing current which reverses its direction and that means you will get an ac current
So you see that in the tank circuit, there is only you have to give a power supply, then only the capacitor gets charged and you can get continuously this kind of a. So if you have an additional power supply connected to a tank circuit, you can see that without any input oscillation or without any input signal, it produces oscillation and or alternating current within the circuit. So this is the peculiarity of a tank circuit and this is the actually the um, we can say the core part of an oscillator. So I hope you understood how uh, a tank circuit works and how it helps to produce oscillations without any help of an additional input signal. Okay, now you understood that an oscillatory circuit, uh, the major part is an inductor and a capacitor. And obviously the frequency of the output oscillation will depend upon the capacitance and the inductance of the coil, right? So now how it depends upon the capacitance and inductance. You know that uh, as the value of the capacitance is very high, it will take larger time to discharge the current, right? So basically the output produced will be having a lower frequency. When the discharging time is more, you can say that oscillations produced will be having a lower frequency, right? It will take more time to discharge. That means more time to produce one, um, one oscillation. So that means you can say that the frequency of an oscillator is inversely proportional to the capacitor and it is found that it is inversely proportional to the root of the capacitance. Okay. Similarly, inductance also behaves in the same way. We can say that larger the inductance, greater is the inductance effect and hence longer time it will require for the current to uh, uh, stop flowing. Or you can say that it will take a, lo a longer time for the current to stop flowing during the discharge of the capacitor. Or I can say longer time will be required for produce one oscillation. So that means frequency of the oscillation will be again uh, inversely proportional to the inductance of, so of the coil. That is larger the inductance value, more time it will take to produce an oscillation, which means that frequency of the oscillation is inversely proportional to the inductance of the coil. So I can write that F is inversely proportional to the root of LC. So mathematically it is found to be root of L. So combine, I can write the frequency of a, an oscillator is inversely proportional to the square root of L and C and it is found to be equal to 2 pi, 1 by 2 pi into root of LC. Okay. And that is equal to uh, say 0 0.159. If you find 1 by 2 pi, you can say this is equal to root of um, LC in hertz frequency. The unit is hertz. Now, if you can change the uh, range of the L and index capacitance value in the normal range which we normally use in the case of an uh, oscillator. Uh, if you convert this L in terms of micro Henry and if you can convert this capacitor uh, value in terms of micro Farad, you can write the F as equal to 159 into square root of uh, say LC where this L is in uh, micro Henry and this capacitance is in micro uh, Farad. Okay, so this is uh, how the frequency of an oscillator circuit uh, depends upon uh, and you can see that for undamped oscillation today, normally in the case of an oscillator the output produced will be damped that means after some time energy will be lost you know that uh, some sort of some um, energy in, in the capacitor you have a dielectric material mostly and there's some energy will be lost from the dielectric um, circuit uh, di because of the loss of the dielectric in the capacitance or the coil it will produce it will have a resistance so heat will be produced in the coil inductance coil so in that way uh, energy can be lost from the coil and uh, some form of energy can be also be lost as form of electromagnetic waves radiating from the uh, circuit or from the inductance coil so that means some sort of energy will be always reduced from the oscillatory circuit. So after some time, the oscillations will get damped or it will die off, 
Okay, so in order to produce an undamped oscillation, which you actually prefer to work with, then you can have practically some kind of an additional energy supplied uh, to the uh, tank circuit so that uh, finally you will get uh, output continuously without any power loss. So when you actually do um, a practical oscillatory circuit or when you come to see the uh, practical oscillatory circuit, you will understand how this um, additional power uh, additional uh, energy supply in order to make up the power loss. So this is all about the introductory uh, topics in the oscillations or, or oscillators about the oscillators. Hope you have understood and if you have any queries you can please put it in the comment box or um, you can uh, uh, contact me. So thank you very much for your patient listening.